Well, as is fairly self-evident, this is the Richard and Judy Book Club. You've clicked through to join us uh, exclusively with W.H. Smith. And this is our latest offering. It's My Dear, I Wanted to Tell You by Louisa Young. This is a fine piece of writing. It's a beautiful story. It, it begins before the First World War, and it features a young lad called Riley Purefoy. He's a working-class boy. And through a chapter of accidents, he ends up uh, working as an artist's assistant um, in a grand London house, which is uh, the household is headed by Sir Arthur Waveney. And Sir Arthur has a beautiful daughter called Nadine, who's roughly uh, Riley's age, and they grow up together through the years, and they fall in love with each other. And when the family sees that happening, they go very cold towards Riley and basically freeze him out. And the World War I has just broken out, so Riley, on impulse really, signs up and finds himself, almost like that, in the trenches in France. Um, that's a fairly neat summary of how it begins, isn't it, I think? Yeah, um, that's about the first chapter or two. OK, that, that'll do. Um, and then, from a, 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 a very readable, conventional um, opening to a novel, it turns into something very special indeed. Because what you do is you contrast the sheer hell of the trenches with the normality and the banality of life that's simultaneously going on back in London. There's, there's one wonderful moment where you make it clear that, that some of these lads, when they finally got some leave, they'd see a friend's guts blown out um, at breakfast time, be on a train back to the Channel Ports at lunchtime, and possibly that evening be walking in a London park uh, in, in, in a normal world, totally, totally different from this planet that they've been on. Um, that was very, very arresting, and the passages that are set in the trenches are brutal. I mean, you don't pull any punches, do you, in terms of describing what it was like? It's a very odd thing, because when you're writing about something that you have no experience of, you, and which is real, you have an absolute sense of responsibility. Because, yes. mm. you know, that was our grandfathers mm. and yeah. great-grandfathers. And all the time I was writing it, I actually had a photograph pinned up above my desk of my boyfriend's great-grandfather, mm. who appears in, in the book, actually, in a sort of slightly fictionalised form. And he died on the Somme. And so I had him looking at me, you know, with his mm -hmm. face very like his yeah. great grandsons in mm -hmm. his ears. And you just think, you did. It was real. All that was real. And you read their accounts. Mm. And you just think, I've got to be really honest about this. Mm. As honest as I can. On the back, I mean, you, the title is My Dear, I Wanted to Tell You. And that obviously comes from a letter. But on the back of the book, there's an illustration of the actual letters mm. that were sent out on the behalf of wounded soldiers. Yeah, what it is, is that... If you write home from the trenches, your letter has to go through the censors and right. it will take forever. So what they would do is they give soldiers pre-printed cards which you would fill in yeah. and just sort of tick the box. So that particular one is, my dear, and you fill in, you know, mum or yeah. you know, girlfriend, whoever it might be, I wanted to tell you that I have received a slight serious wound in my... And you delete as applicable right. and fill in. Hmm. So and you're sitting there and you're up to here with morphine and you've been shot to bits and you're yeah. given this card and it's a tick the box and send it home to mum. Hmm. What are you going to say? I've received a serious wound in my genitals or something. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. But at the end, the little printed bit back from the Ministry of mm. Defence is I'm being surrounded by these wonderful doctors and care oh, nurses yes. who are doing absolutely everything yes. they can. So basically don't worry. And yeah. then, of course, in many, many cases, it was very, very, very much not that. Yeah. Riley and Nadine's uh, love affair <laughs> continues through the book, but like so many love affairs of that time involving men who were serving at the front and somehow surviving, um, what they were experiencing there on, on a daily basis uh, stood between them and their loved one, whether it was their wife mm. or their girlfriend. It was so unutterably awful um, that really human language couldn't describe it. Um, it wasn't just the emotional impact it had on them, but, but the physical, what they were seeing mm. every day. And, and that's a real problem, isn't it, for, for, for Riley, to actually communicate to Nadine what it's like. Well, this is, you know, whenever anybody says, you know, oh, Dad never talked about the war, yeah. and you see the same thing with the Second World War and, and Vietnam, that if you say what's really going on, then you're somehow polluting the very thing that you're protecting, which mm. is yeah. lovely, mm. glorified, idealised home life and yeah. you know, honey still for tea and, mm. and all that. So they couldn't tell their families what they were really going through. And if you think about how young they were mm. as yes. well, mm. and then you've got the people at home going, oh, dear, we can't get any butter and there's no taxis in London. <laughs> and then you've got the men and boys suffering as they were. So this is another reason for the, for the title as mm. well, you know, because on one level they long to communicate yeah. 
with their wives, their friends, their families, their parents. On the other hand, they simply can't. And even if they did, it wouldn't hmm. come over real. So this is why, in the end, I have Nadine actually go to the war as a nurse, yeah. Yeah. which, again, it's a marvellous old cliché, soldier and nurse. Hmm. But there's a reality behind that, the, the emotional reality of what people hmm. suffered. Yeah. Hmm and how they dealt with it. Well, it's been described, your book has been described as a uh, bird song for the uh, new millennium. Yeah. It's uh, better than bird song. Do you think so? Yeah, I, I, bird song is a fabulous book by Sebastian I, I, Fawkes, but I, I agree. Well, all comparisons are, are, are slightly specious, obviously. A bird song's a marvellous book. This is a very marvellous book, he said in an illiterate way. Um, it, it, it's very special, and it I, I love the pace of it. I, I love the way it starts in a, in a fairly, it's a very interesting, but quite a mundane sort of way, mm. you know, it's a story that you cut, might, might have read before, and then just goes into a completely different place, as I said at the beginning, almost onto another planet. Um, how much of, of the, the descriptions, of the, particularly of the injuries that these guys mm. uh, suffered, uh, you go into great detail. Where did you get that from? Did you, Imperial well, War Museum? Or? my grandmother was a sculptor, and during the First World War, one of the things that she did was work with uh, Major Harold Gillies, who set up the first plastic specialist okay. ah. yes. facial injuries unit. Yes. And so she would be casting the faces of the wounded men yeah. in a very complicated job and mm. quite horrific and sort of miraculous. These were the first skin grafts, the weren't they? Yeah. Well, not quite the first, but, but you know, war gives you a never-ending supply of otherwise healthy young men uh -huh. who need phenomenal treatment. And so they sort of made it up on the hoof and they were working yeah. with the most, you know, sort of rebuilding jaws and eyes yeah. and noses and skin from here and there. And mm. So I, I found out about that through my grandmother. Mm. And... Um, once you start looking into that, which I first did about 20 years ago when I was writing her biography, mm -hmm. and once you see what they were doing and you look at the photographs and you put it together with that letter and you think, oh my word, yeah. oh dear. Talking about your grandmother, was she, was she the widow of uh, Captain Scott of the yes. Antarctic? Yes, And the That's mother right. of Sir Peter Scott? Yes, the very one. Yes. Extraordinary history you've got. I mean, and you, you actually grew up in the house where Peter Pan was written. I, I'm London. surrounded by ghosts. <laughs> yeah. I've got really quite brilliant people circling me and have had since a very small age. Well, yes. that's, that's obviously given you inspiration. They've been very benevolent Endlessly. ghosts, to be obvious. It really is. It's a lovely book. Uh, just, Thank just, you. just going back very quickly to what you were saying about, about the injuries, I mean, what I didn't realise was how comprehensive they were. For example, I mean, they were men without any face. Yep. I mean, nothing. Um, yep. uh, uh, they should have died, really, and mm. they, and as you make clear in the book, they had to carry on. The war finished, but they had to carry on in these states. Yeah. And some of them were wearing tin masks, mm -hmm. so they could go out in the street because yeah. people, some people, would faint yeah. when, when they, they saw the sight of them. Um, well, it's 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 an engrossing story. Um, it's beautifully written, and the the romantic side of it, the, the love aspect of it, is just charming. It's absolutely charming and very real, and you can, you can imagine it all happening exactly as you've written it down. Many congratulations. Thank you so much. Beautiful book. My dear, I wanted to tell you, you'll get the sense of the title when you read the book. Um, by the museum. Many, many congrats. Uh, OK, you. Uh, you can find out more about all the books uh, that we feature here uh, on the website here. That's whsmith.co.uk forward slash Richard and Judy. Uh, don't forget, you can download our podcasts. That's uh, free from iTunes. And uh, at the back of all the books uh, that we're, we're pumping out uh, this, this season yeah, are lots and lots of extra content. Um, we've got a little Q&A with the authors in the back, um, all sorts of ideas for discussions for the book and other things as well. So uh, enjoy. <laughs>